All Fired Up by Derpy Wings 345 Guilty Pleasures We all have them. In fact, every single pony in Equestria has one. For example, Princess Luna enjoys the odd video game. Princess Celestia has a delectable and very unnatural love for cake. And even Twilight enjoys the odd romance novel once in a while. But there is one guilty pleasure that a lot of ponies share. What is that guilty pleasure? Drinking. I mean, who doesn't enjoy the warm feeling of some rum or whiskey as it trickles down your throat? I'll tell you about one particular pony that has made drinking not only a guilty pleasure, but a regular obsession. My mate, Final Scratch. I cannot tell you how many times we've walked into a bar together and me having to carry Vinyl back out because she's drank so much. I personally don't know what the big deal with alcohol is. I enjoy it, don't get me wrong, but when I enter a nightclub or bar I try not to drink too much. Why? Well, add this thing with hangovers. I've had one once, thinking it can't be so bad. They are. Imagine a headache, and then times the throbbing, aching and uncontrollable pain by 20. That's pretty much hangovers in a nutshell. I couldn't even move, I was in so much pain. That was about five years ago when me and Vinyl first met. I remember it perfectly. She took me to a bar so we could get to know each other a bit better. That's when I found out she had her obsession with drinking. She drank about five pints of lager and even topped that up with some whiskey. I drank quite a lot too, enough to give me the hangover. But honestly, I just did it to look cool in front of Vinyl. I don't know how Vinyl can live like that, honestly. We go out to drink about two or three times a week and about 90% of the time, Vinyl ends up with a dreaded hangover. I sometimes wish that Vinyl didn't have the obsession she has. I, I only drink with her for her sake. I wouldn't care if she had an obsession with cake like Celestia. At least then she would actually see what she's doing to her. Actually, to be honest, Celestia eats cake almost every day and her body shape is just fine. However, last night was different from most nights. Me and Vinyl were in the Mare's Quill, a local bar in Canterlot. It was Vinyl's favorite bar, and I was never too sure of it. A lot of pikey stallions went in there. I've lost count of the times that one particular stallion has entered that bar, sat as close as they could to me, and give me repetitive lovey-dovey and creepy stares that made you think they're gonna nick you and force you into bed with them. But that wasn't the problem. Vinyl and me were getting ready to leave. Well, I say both of us, I actually meant me. Vinyl was all fired up and drunk as she'd ever been. To be honest, she had drunk seven lagers, four white wines and a pint of beer. That was much more than she usually took in. It was almost like she wanted to try and kill herself. Yeah, yeah. You know, Okti, I think I need some love. I froze at that. What did she mean? I should have said nothing and left it. But I played along, like a fool, I played along. What do you mean? I think I need some <coughs> sex. I gasped. Vinyl had never said anything like that. In fact, I actually believed that she was against sex for some reason. Why is that, Vinyl? I, I don't I, no. I just feel like I need some action from a stallion. A hot <coughs> chunky stallion with hooves like ice cubes. Hooves like ice cubes? Yup, she definitely lost it. Like that one over there, hey dude! Final wave the slow wonky arm at an unsuspecting mare. The mare gasped and moved away. I, I face hooved. Yeah, that one likes me. The uh, last time I had some sexy movement from a stallion was back in 87. 87? I knew for a fact that Vinyl wasn't even born in 1987. She was born in 1989. Really? Yeah. It felt so good, like you're meant to be. He didn't stick around though. He went off with another bastard. Uh, uh, Mare. Vinyl never swore either. Sure, she always acted like the cool, 
big rad alpha, but she kept her foul language as far from her lips as possible. Octi, did I ever tell you how hot you were? My pupils shrunk at that, but I kept on playing along like the stupid bitch I am. Really, Vinyl? Yeah. Your silky grey fur, your blue black mane. Vinyl knelt closer to me. Oxy, let's get busy. I panicked at that. I pushed Vinyl off her stall but gasped when I realized what I'd just done. OMG, Vinyl, I'm so sorry I didn't. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> just a little tumble. I relaxed when I saw she was okay. I took the last sip from my glass of wine before giving a tip to the bartender and helping Vinyl up. Uh, it was a challenge. She kept on slipping and giggling. I had to get her out of there. The place was going to kill her if we stayed much longer. Come on, Vinyl. It's time we both get home and into bed. Ooh, naughty, Vinyl stated. You know, before this, I never knew how inappropriate Vinyl could be when she was drunk. She was actually rather present when she was sober. Just a bit full of herself. That night, she was anything but pleasant. I helped Vinyl out of the bar as she stumbled and tripped. The fresh air felt so good. I'd just spent four hours in that stuffy prison of a bar. I bet you can imagine the relief of stepping out. Okay, Vinyl, let's get you home, where you're safe. Yeah, I... Uh, looking forward to... Uh, having a little fun with you, Oxy. Honestly, it was hurting me to see Vinyl like this. What happened on the walk home wasn't nothing worthy of noting. Just a few rude remarks and trips. She kept on trying to walk off to some other place and just kept her tight in my grasp. She was so drunk she was completely unpredictable. I'm lucky she didn't lash out at me. She'd done that once before. It was right in the face. When I finally got back, I laid vinyl on the bed. To my surprise, she pulled me close to her. Oh, Octi, I love you, let's... Uh, let's get busy then, shall we? I was shocked. I pulled away and sent vinyl rolling to the other side of the bed. I pulled a spare blanket out of my closet before I ran downstairs. I decided it would be best if I slept on the sofa. That way Vinyl couldn't do anything... sudden. As I lay on the sofa, I felt tears welling up in my eyes. I had the perfect family, the perfect career, and I wish I could say the perfect friend. However, if I said that, I would be lying straight to my own face. I knew that Vinyl wasn't perfect, and I was so worried about her. That alcohol is destroying her life. If she can't clean herself up, I'm really scared that the damn alcohol is going to be the death of her. It was hammering her, her very organ, her every muscle, and even her personality. But that's when I had an idea. I looked around the living room until I finally found the telephone. It was pretty dark, and Vinyl was already moving the telephone around. She was already calling her fans and arranging some big gig. If her fans had seen her then... Taking a deep breath, I wonder if I really wanted to go through with this idea. But Vinyl needed help, no matter how hard it was to admit. I took a deep breath and picked up the phone.